All right, so <clears throat> I have already plotted the scatter plots for both classes and drawn the line at best fit. So we're going to pick up from there. Uh, all right. So uh, first question is write the equation of the line of best fit for each class. So basically, I'm going to start with third period here. I'm going to write mine in slope intercept form. So I need the slope and the y intercept. The y intercept for mine, yours may be slightly different, but for mine, it looks like about 90, maybe a little less than that, maybe like 88 or 89. So that's my y intercept. And then my slope for mine looks like about down one over four roughly, okay? Yours doesn't need to be exactly down one over four, but it should be very close to that, okay? So I'm gonna say y equals negative one fourth x plus 90. I'm just gonna use those round numbers just to keep it easy. Uh, if you said negative one fifth or negative one third even, I would say those are pretty good. I would say negative one half is too, uh, too steep. For, for that line right there. But that's what I would say for that one. How about the other class over here? So to me, it looks like when I drew my line of best fit, the y-intercept was closer to 95. And to me, it looks like we're going down one, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two, roughly, okay? So for this one, I'm gonna say negative one half x plus 95, okay? <clears throat> now, if you had like negative two-fifths or negative three-fifths or negative three-sixths x, you know, anything that's pretty close to one-half, that's okay, you know. if you Look, if you said four, right, like four over one, that's wrong, okay? If you said negative 14.3, like that's not even close, okay? So I'm, I'm going to be willing to take things that are close, but it's got to actually be close, so, okay. Uh, give a rough estimate of the correlation coefficient for each class. So remember, the correlation coefficient is just a measure of how closely the dots actually fit the, the line here. So uh, they definitely fit much closer on 11th period than they do on 3rd period. I'll just try and get it so you can see the periods. So this is 11th period. They're much closer. This is much further away. So this is a stronger correlation. Okay, they're both negative because they're going down from left to right. So these are both going to be negative. And what we're going to say is this one for uh, for 11th period, I'm going to guess is probably about 0 0.90 or 0 0.95 uh, negative, right? So negative 0 0.90, negative 0.95, maybe negative 0.85 would be a, a reasonable guess, but it's pretty strong, right? So remember, the stronger you are, the closer to one you are. The weaker you are, the closer to zero you are. How about third period? So third period's a little weaker, and this is this is kind of hard to eyeball. But um, I think when I actually did this on the computer, it, it came back at negative 0.74. But if I was going to guess, I would guess negative 0.70. Okay, so a little weaker than the the 0.9 or 0.95 or whatever this happens to be, but still decently strong. Like there's definitely uh, a a correlation here that you can see. It's definitely trending downward. You can see that too if you go up and look at the table up there. Okay, let's keep moving here. On which class does Snapchat appear to have a, a more of an effect? How do you know? So um, I would say 11th period for two reasons. Okay, the first reason is that the line of best fit actually fits the data points better. So regardless of the answer of, hey, this slope is more uh, steep. And it's showing that, like, you know, people over here are scoring in the 40s and 50s, whereas people over here for third period are scoring, you know, only down in, like, the 60s. Um, so not only are the test scores lower in 11th period for more Snapchat use, right? This is more Snapchat use over here. This is less Snapchat use. But... Um, the, the dots are also fitting the line even closer. So I would, I would say both of those. So I would say 11th period. So we're going to say 11th period. And that's because the slope is steeper. The slope is steeper. So negative 1 half is steeper than uh, negative 1 fourth. And the correlation coefficient is higher. The correlation 
coefficient is higher. Okay. All right. How about this question? A student in third period and 11th period both spend about 45 minutes per day on Snapchat. Which student, that's a typo there, which student would you expect to have a higher test score and by how much? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to mark where these students fall. So where would somebody fall if they were at 45 minutes on Snapchat? They're going to fall on this vertical line here. So I'm going to go up to my line of best fit actually. I'm not going to take this point right here, but I'm going to actually take the line of best fit and drop a point right there. So I'm expecting somebody in third period, according to my line of best fit, to score roughly, you know, whatever that is, 77, 78 maybe. Okay, this is 75, this is 80. So this is about 77, 78. How about somebody in 11th period? What are they going to score? They're going to score right here. And if you look, that number is closer to um, 72 or 73. So you can tell just from looking at the person in third period is you're going to expect that they're going to score a little higher. Okay, so we're going to say, which student would you expect to have a higher test score? And by how much? Uh, we're going to say a student in third period. A student in third period. And by how much? Uh, I would say by about five points. Now, is it possible for somebody in 11th period to score better than somebody in third period? Yeah, absolutely. But we would kind of expect somebody in third period to score a little higher. All right, now we're going to look at the second page here. So here's the exact data from the first page for the classes displayed again. Uh, number seven is asking which class has a higher mean daily time spent on Snapchat and by how much? So mean is just a fancy word for average. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up the daily time on Snapchat. So zero, I'm just going to take these numbers here. So zero plus 15 plus 55. I'm going to add all these up and divide by a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 data points. Okay, so we're going to do 0 plus 15 plus 55 plus 30 plus 35 plus 90 plus 70 plus 45 plus 85 plus 20. I'm getting 445. When you divide that by 10, you get 44 and a half. So the average is 44 and a half for third period. And then we're going to um, do the same for 11th period. So we're going to do 0 plus 55 plus 25 plus 30 plus 10 plus 70 plus 100 plus 80 plus 90 plus 40. So I'm getting 500, and when you divide that by 10, you get 50. Okay, so which one had a higher mean daily time spent on Snapchat? So that would have been 11th period. And by how much? By whatever the difference is there, so five and a half. All right, and then we get to number eight. Which class has a higher mean test grade, and by how much? So I just did the same thing, except instead of Snapchat, we do the test grade. And it looks to me like third period has the advantage. So third period has the advantage by uh, eight and a half points. Okay, all right, so we got that done. And now we're going to move down to the box and whisker plot. So in order to do the box and whisker plot, you have to put these numbers in order. So the numbers that were up in the table need to be in order. So I've done that already just so that we can fill this out kind of quickly. So the third period minimum is zero. Q1, so I haven't actually figured out the quartiles yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to find the median. Okay, so the median is the number that's halfway in between. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just mark like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And see how we get down to these last two numbers here. Okay, so they're right in the middle here. So the middle number is actually whatever's exactly halfway in between those two. So our median number before I get to Q1 and Q3 is going to be whatever's halfway between 35 and 45. So you can just add them up and divide by 2. When you do that, you get 40. The uh, Q1 then is just the number 
that is the median of the lower half of our data set. So you take the lower half of the data set, you find the median, take the upper half of the data set, find the median, that's Q3 up there. So those are Q1 and Q3. So Q1 is 20 for us, Q3 is 70, and then the max score is just the highest score. So that's 90. We'll do a similar thing here for uh, 11th period. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So whatever's halfway in between these two. So what is that? Uh, 47.5. So that's the median. 47.5. Um, the minimum is 0. The max is 100. Q1 is going to be whatever's halfway on the bottom data set. Q3 is that guy right there. So this is 25. This is 80. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come down and fill out our box and whisker plot. Okay, so I'm going to do third period first with the blue here. So our minimum is 0 for third period. Q1 falls at 20. The median falls at 40. The uh, Q3 falls at 70. And then the max falls at 90. So we box this guy in here. Oop. That's not the best box I've ever drawn before. There we go. This guy extends to there. That's the whisker. That's the whisker. That's third period. Uh, 11th period is going to be min at 0, q1 at 25, uh, median at 47 and a half, so that's probably about right there, q3 is at 80, and then the max is 100. So we're going to extend our box here, extend our box here, and we get that, all right. And then the last question here, you'll remember from the levels assignments that uh, standard deviation refers to how spread out the data is. Which class period has a higher standard, standard deviation for the daily time spent on Snapchat and why? So um, I would say for a couple reasons here, um, it looks to me like 11th period is slightly more spread out. And there are two reasons for that. The, uh, the, the range here between the minimum and the maximum is 100 versus 90 here. This one only spans 90, right? See how we're going from um, 0 to 90 versus 0 to 100. So this has a little bit of a wider range, which doesn't always guarantee that your standard deviation is higher, but that's a, you know, a good starting place. But what also I notice is that the um, what we call the inner quartile range, so how wide the box is, for the blue, it runs from 20 to 70, so this is 50 wide here. For the red, it runs from 25 to 80, which is 55, so it's a little wider. So not only do you have a wider box here, you also have a wider range from um, from max to min. So that's why I would say, um, for this one, I would say 11th period, just by the fact that because the data is more spread out because the data is more spread out. That's one of the nice things about a box and whisker plot is it'll show you that, the spread.